Welcome to the 2023 Ultimate Mead Maker Competition. This is the first year this has ever happened, and I'm super excited to host it and to share all 16 of this year's contestants with you. These contestants were picked from my Discord for this year. The Ultimate Mead Maker is a title that has to be earned by completing and winning four challenges based around mead making. There are four total rounds with contestants being eliminated at the end of every round. Round one will feature 16 contestants, round two will have 12, round three will have eight, and the final round will be four contestants. Each round is intended to test each mead maker's knowledge, sensory, and mead making skills. The winner of the Ultimate Mead Maker competition of 2023 will receive $250 in prize money and a custom made trophy. This entire competition would not be possible without the generous support of some key sponsors. Thank you to these wonderful people for sponsoring the Ultimate Mead Maker competition. Our contestants are ready. We're going to go ahead and jump into round one. Round one is all about testing their mead making knowledge. Contestants will be completing a live quiz and the bottom four will be eliminated. Let's see how they do. Welcome contestants to the first ever Ultimate Mead Maker competition. This is for 2023. We are testing about 20 of you to see who from this, from here is the Ultimate Mead Maker. We're in round one. And um, as we've talked about, we're about to do a little bit of a quiz and uh, the top 12 people We'll move on to round two. So I hope you're ready. I hope you've been studying your mead content, your textbook I sent out. So if not, you might be in trouble. Negative. Oh, no. What textbook? What? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we're in trouble. You got the binder? <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, here we go in round one. Your goal is speed and of course, accuracy. Be correct with your, <laughs> your guessing or, or answering. So here we go. There was one about how many pounds and a gallon or something. I'm not fast at math, so I just guessed. Oh, crap. I forgot math. Oh, shoot. I clicked it. It was the wrong. <laughs> Dang it's, it. Uh, Dang. 12, 12 pounds of honey per gallon. Yeah, I mean, uh, so <laughs> the question that threw me for a loop was definitely uh, the one I read wrong. <laughs> and so it was the pasteurization one that was for what what technique is not a way to stabilize. And I just read it, what technique is stabilized? I'm trying to go as quick as I can and I just hit pasteurize. I'm like, dumb, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I read that wrong. <laughs> oh, I read that wrong. Oh, oh yeah, which, which is, is reliable, is not, that how you read it? Oh no. Not a reliable, yeah. Well, if I have to say I was felt the most cheated on something, it might be the uh, stabilization question. Ah, Everybody yes. talks about one uh, micrometer, and maybe they're not talking about stabilization, but um, mm. that's just something I need to read up a little bit more on. Yeah, Wait, this is a maniacal, maniacal teacher in me is uh, having a great time right now. This is <laughs> you can write all the exams for my test at work now. <laughs> The question that threw me for a loop was the uh, categories for the BJCP. And I was like, I was like, all right, so I was trying to go through all of them, semi sweet, sweet, dry. And yeah, that, that one threw me for a loop. But four base, four base categories. Uh, to me, it was the one that uh, was calculating ABB. I, I was an arts major for a reason, so <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I use a calculator for that. I, I there's I don't do that longhand, so you know that one definitely threw me for a loop. Hey. Oh. oh, we're doing great. I can math good. I promise. Man, I'm finally I'm killing it. it. I finally got the two me questions me. right. <clears throat> the question that threw me for a loop was the hydrometer because I use a refractometer a high gravity wine fruit refractometer and I measure everything in bricks. Um, so that kind of threw me a little bit. 
Okay. Sorry, I definitely just gave you at least oh, one. Oh, I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Would I do two right answers there? Whoop. All right. So the question that threw me for a loop the most were the ones that had more than one right answer. Here it. So we can live with it. <laughs> Oh, which question threw me most for a loop? Uh, probably anything that had to do with sensory. I'm not, uh, I'm still in the process, you know, of collecting varietals and uh, I'm more of a, a sensory person when it comes to like memorizing things, maybe, and not, not so much textbook. So like uh, 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 anything that had to do with like the flavor of the honey uh, probably threw me off a little bit for sure. Like macadamia nut, I don't know that. <laughs> Well, no one's complained about the no water peach question yet, so I'll, I'll complain about that <laughs> one. It seems like there's a lot of assumptions about yield and mm -hmm. um, like, are you pressing it or not pressing it? So, so, I'll, so I'll complain about that one. Oh, what the fuck did I get myself into? Yeah, so the question that threw me off the most was definitely the how much gravity points a pound of um, honey added just because I just go based on the hydrometer anyway. Um, and then I just calculate my recipe out. So it's not one I think about too often. It's kind of like subconscious. So it's like, oh, what are the rough, what's the rough um, addition here for gravity? But I felt a little cheated by the um, how many points per gallon honey question because I, I always use 35 um other than that i felt like i did pretty well i kind of wish i would have paid a little more attention at the beginning ones because i was uh, i i had the lead and then i lost it so <laughs> the honey gravity question as larry mentioned because i've always just seen it as 0.35 everywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh but I, I mean uh, other than that there was a lot of them i just didn't know <laughs> Probably like just to echo everyone else with the gravity question. So we've reached the end of round one. Here are the results. Ultimately, we have to send home four people today. sending home Alexander, Edwin, Adrian, and Steven. Thank you to these wonderful friends for competing this year. Unfortunately, the competition has to continue though. We're headed straight into round two. Round two is testing our contestants' honey knowledge. I found 11 different honeys that came in a honey stick form and purchased them. I then labeled each one with a number and shipped out a package with all 11 of them to the 12 contestants we have. I found a bunch of really fun and wild honeys that these contestants might or might not know much about. They had zero briefing on this round, so they opened this package pretty much blind. This round will feature a preliminary tasting with the first six honey sticks. Each contestant must guess which honey correlates to which stick within a time limit. The last four sticks are reserved for a tiebreaker situation. This is quite a daunting challenge, and I hope you enjoy watching them work their way through it. Welcome contestants to round two. You have uh, been sitting on this box for quite some time, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say, open them up and check out what's inside. <sighs> Finally. I have this sneaking little... suspicion it's a bunch of honey sticks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have in your possession 10 honey sticks. We're going to use six of them for this first round, and the last four are going to be a tiebreaker, given we need to go into a tiebreaker round, which will not be done in this moment, but will be done later. So here's how this works. You have a Google form. 
I am going to give you 12 minutes to identify, to the best of your ability, the six honey sticks you have. And in on the Google form, it'll show you your options. And uh, once you're done, of course, hit submit, it's Google form. And then we will see who moves on to round three. And your time starts now. Yeah, it seemed like there was a mix of um, different pollen sources and then also maybe some honeys that were just flavored with other things. And so that uh, was, you know, struggled with that a little bit, but it seems like it came out okay in the end. So, well, <laughs> apparently I'm not that good at it. The purple kind of threw me and the pink one kind of threw me. At least I think this one, number four, kind of looks pink in the right light. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't, like I said, I don't get, my wife tastes more honey than I do, but, uh, you yeah, know, they, apparently, I don't know my flavors. <laughs> yeah, uh, so round one, uh, when you asked, uh, you know, how we felt about the challenge and everything, I, I, I sort of admitted that uh, tasting was my biggest weakness, and so, of course, round two is going to be a, a tasting exam here, so it was really fun. I mean, you know, I've been making mead for two, three years now, and, uh, I, I don't have the experience with varietals that a lot of people have, but I mean, I have 11 in front of me now, I guess, or 12 or however many. So uh, I guess we'll use that as a learning uh, opportunity and, uh, and, and good luck to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, so this was really cool. Uh, having spent a significant time of my career so far in restaurants and stuff, you, you're, you're challenged by, you know, tasting profiles and and looking for things in in a flavor profile um but this was hard i mean the 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 basic honey flavor is so strong you the it's it really takes uh some concentration and some really some training i think uh to really pick out some of those subtle flavors and uh this was a great challenge for that you know especially as mead makers you know we're out here trying to trying to influence those those nuances and this was a great uh challenge for that so i i really enjoyed it it was a great push for me uh for my palate uh and i really enjoyed it uh dude i was so nervous because like i got covid a couple months ago and i haven't been on taste right but like mostly with just bitter stuff so it's like if we have to drink alcohol i'm gonna be boned but it was honey so it's fine uh I am not like, I don't really use a lot of varietal honeys in my brews and stuff because I don't have a lot of money. So I just buy whatever's on sale at the market. Okay, so I went through them pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, I probably went through the first three within about a minute just because I was like, oh, that's what that tastes like. And I, I'm, I try not to second guess myself. So I was confident about three of them going in. I thought it was a really cool, um experience to try to differentiate some of the subtle flavors um a lot of these had a lot of uh berry notes to it so it's really challenging to be like oh have i worked with that honey before is this wildflower like there's so many things pulling me so many different directions and having it blind was a lot of fun i've uh, worked with a lot of honey um in the recent past i haven't worked with the berry honeys much so being able to taste them even if I got every single one of them wrong, um, I, it was a fun experience. So this was this was actually pretty interesting because uh, I've been like studying for BJCP honeys and everything for the past few weeks. So getting some of these flavors that I haven't had yet is really it's really boosting my like some of my confidence there, but also a learning learning opportunity to uh, get these flavors down a little bit better. Our wildflower here in Arizona is really strong, so I think I'd mix that up with the uh, orange blossom, maybe. But um, it was really fun. I, I just it was a confidence booster too. And just I haven't tried a lot of these before, and I also want to like take them all and like try them all together. So Super honey. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's really neat tasting things that are regional as well, because like the honey, the wildflower that I had when I lived in Arizona is way different than the wildflower I have here in Texas now. Um, so being able to kind of differentiate between different regions, I think is helpful. And I'm super stoked that I actually got so many right, because some of these were real close to each other. Yeah, this is uh, really interesting, uh, you know, especially, you know, being a meat judge, you, you know, you have to refresh yourself from time to time and go back and kind of reassess and like Tracy was saying, some of these are really close to depending on how you're uh, tasting at the time. Uh, other factors that go into beforehand uh, can kind of mess with your perception a little bit, but uh, this was definitely uh, a unique challenge and uh, probably something I'll go forward and, you know, find, figure out what kit you bought or little samples you bought and before I do another meat judge, you know, let's try these again, figure them out and go from there. So our contestants went through the first six honey sticks. It was a very tight race, but unfortunately, we do have to eliminate some people this round. Here are the results from the test. In this round, we are eliminating Carlos, Brian, Valas, and Troy. We've really enjoyed having you, but unfortunately, your race towards the ultimate meat maker will not be completed. So that's the end of round two. Round three and four are rapidly headed your way. Our final contestants will now face some really tough challenges as they make mead. We've gotten past the knowledge portion of mead making, and it's finally time to test their skills and make that mead. Stay tuned for round three and four.